Georgi Spro is with us. He's written a book called Investing Best and Simple Steps. Now more than ever, people could use this book, no doubt about it, when they're confused and just trying to take baby steps or bigger steps than that. Georgi, thanks so much for coming on, and tell us why you wrote this book. Hi, Kate. Thank you again for having me on. Why I wrote the book, because I was just so compelled as a young man and actually born and bred in the working working class neighborhood community and faithfully driven in my belief with God and as a Catholic. I wrote it because I wanted to reach out to everybody and also to make it affordable to average paying consumers who don't know about money and because uh, people were lost during the times of the pandemic during when COVID-19 happened. And around that time, uh, that was when I was compelled to, I'm going to write a book. And afterwards, I became really in the student of finance, and I studied about finance, investing. And I thought that, okay, there were better ways that for people to efficiently start investing. It's just by actually also opening an account, basically, as of today, which is just as reading this book, 30 pages, investing my best simple steps methods. So in in the book, you talk about some big things like people panic when it comes to the stock market. Oh, I don't understand the stock market. And it just seems like it's always crashing and especially now. And what do we do? How do you avoid that panic when and you talk about it in the book when the stock market falls? The big thing is staying proactive. One is one of the biggest lessons that I have probably more than likely have learned so many times through Best economic minds like, you know, Warren Buffett, he talks about staying proactive and knowing when to think that all right, when stock markets start to fall or, you know, they start to rise in an inclining, inclining fluctuation, they would want to get out at a certain point. You know, this say, for example, if they want to cash out a certain deposit that they've committed to make in a market, but also... Staying in the market with longevity, another method I learned was through, in the book I talk about diversification and how to diversify your methods of of investments, but also in terms of it really boils down to just homework. Being active in your investments is like I wrote in one of my chapters, you're crafting your own toolbox, right? And you have Mm -hmm. this toolbox in place. You have your tools, you have your sets of hardware, you have your sets of tape measures and hammers. Okay, all right. It's just like investing yourself in these. Well, okay, you think that it's easy to organize and invest the tools and the hardware that, okay, a regular uh, paying dad who works a daily job and he has a toolbox to invest for Make sure that, okay, when he does housework every day or once a weekend when he gets the time to add equity to his house for better projects so that when he decides to sell the house, he can get more value out of that house in a uh, family-style living community. It's also similar to the analogy of just going back into your investments. One of any average person can do it, right? And... It's just really boils, it boils down to their personal success. They can just as easily start investing today because one of the reasons why I wrote my book is just as simply as 30 to 32 pages is to help themselves start financially for their endeavor. Right, and it's easy. Like you said, That's you said this a couple times. Because you can follow 32 pages. A lot of times people will say, oh, I can't, it's too long, I can't do that, that's just too much, and that's what you talk about. And you you talk about something I think that's interesting. You've told us some of the traits for being a successful investor, and you mentioned about the toolbox, all of that, and doing your homework. What about budgeting? 
people hate that word budget, but it's important, right? Because it doesn't matter how much it's that you do it. You do it consistently, right? And you talk about that. We hate budgeting because that was what's been told us consistently going on as children. You know, you got to budget your money. You've got to <laughs> go over your budgets. You know, budget your books. Go over your daily expenses every weekend or however number of com- committed, however number of times that would okay. be. I'm sure my my parents have told you many. My parents have told me many times. Your parents have told you many times mm-hmm. to budget your checkbooks. Find a day to budget your checkbooks. <laughs> uh, but I laugh at times because okay, this was a learning lesson. This was an le- important lesson that we got ingrained as kids growing up. But also, it did get in the way at times. But when the simplest learn simplest number of lessons is learning. A simple lesson like budget your books or always read 30, 30 pages in a book, one chapter a day is basically 30 pages in a book, right? Reading mm-hmm. one chapter a day with 30 pages, you can get value, added value that you're putting in for yourself. And it's just as similar as you're getting added value when you're checking your budgets, you're balancing your books. But instead of just always checking your budget and balancing your checkbooks, find a way to expand it. And this was one of the lessons I learned from one of the uh, business minds like Peter Thiel in investments. He talks about investments that, okay, any average, any average Joe can really become successful in their personal investments because they've done the due diligence. They've taken that active patience, being proactive instead of reactive because a lot of the times we're driven by speculation when we don't understand about budgets or money because we spend so much. Right, there you go. So it's about being proactive. We're speaking with Georgi Spro, and the name of the book is Investing Best and in Simple Steps, Wise and Simple Steps to Increase Financial Knowledge. And you've said it throughout this, but what do you hope people take away from reading your book? What I hope is they can choose for themselves. They can make their own decision and get added value based on this book. I think encourage themselves to pass it on to their family, your friends, moms, dads, cousins, everyone in the in public, friends, coworkers, and uh, get added value to the book. There you go. Added value. That's a fruit who's looking for added value. You can pick it up on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, wherever great books are sold. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kate.